Oh. Look at this. Crooked discipline. Oh. Jump up. Oh. Oh. I am back with yet another video. Today, because of a suggestion, we will create the simple yet overpowered trigger bot. All you need to do is to aim at an entity and the program shoots for you. Just imagine the possibilities. However, I wanted to make this as simple as possible for you guys. So instead of checking that the entity we aim at is an enemy, we will shoot at all entities, which means we will also shoot when we aim at the teammates. We like a little gamble. I recommend to subscribe, leave a like, but also a comment. All of these things help me out. And thank you. Remember to comply with the terms of service for the game you code hacks on. These tutorials are only for learning and programming and you should not exploit them for unfair advantages. Now enjoy this tutorial. Welcome to today's showcase. Let's open up the code or the project that you will have at the end. You can see that it's not a lot. It's just a few lines of code and let's open Steam and under Counter-Strike 2 we will right click properties in and in the launch options we will add dash insecure so that we don't get banned and we can't join the normal matchmaking with VAC. All right let's start it and go into a practice game. Okay let's open the code again and run it. Let's hope it works. So when you have run the project you should see this lagging crosshair slash entity id which tells us the id that we're aiming at so if we aim at an entity we can see that it says 321 so if we hold our hotkey it will shoot at the entity so this trigger bot will work both ways you can aim on teammates and it will still shoot so let's uh, Let's move down to the CTs. Alright, so here is the explanation behind this simplified trig bo trigger bot. So, in Counter Strike 2, we have our crosshair, we can aim on an entity or enemy, and we see the text Bot Weasley, Bassy. Now, the thing is, it will show an ID in the game or in the memory, and we will take that ID and check if it's above zero which means uh, there is an entity in our crosser and then force an attack so let's uh, check that out with can sheet engine but before you run sheet engine always run cancer strike 2 with dash insecure mon on and then you can open sheet engine we can add the entity index id which if we add the signed on we can see that it's minus one when we don't aim at anything and when we aim at the entity it shows the entity id 285 279 so it's different for every entity and our teammates have this entity id as well so it will work on teammates and enemies it will shoot on everything that comes in the way of the crosshair so that's why it's simplified in a more advanced trigger bot you would probably loop through the entity list and check by all the entities if they're at, they are teammates or enemies and then shoot if it's an enemy but this is the simplified version let me know if you guys want the advanced one as well 
But for shooting, uh, forcing attacks, when we hold our left click, you can see that our value is 65537. And when we drop it, it's 256, which means if we want to take this shot, for example, we would just change this to 65537 and he will shoot. Now, the crosshair wasn't directly on the enemy, but and we will take it back to 256 to reset the attack. Let's try it again. 37 and he shot the enemy. So take it back 256. That's how we do it. Is here plus attack minus attack. That's how we do it. So let's get it into coding. I'll see you guys. Like we always do, we will create a new console project in C Sharp. The .NET version will be .NET 8. Now when we have created the project, we will delete the template code, then go into the properties and select the build option to use the 64-bit platform target. Then, when we have enabled the 64-bit platform, we will install Sweat64. You will get a warning here if you did not set the project properties to the platform target, so make sure to do that. Next thing will be to add the usings, which is for the Sweat64, and the interop services. With the interop services, we will perform a DLL import to get the get async key state function. This will handle or work as our hotkey. Then we will create a new instance of the sweat library with the chosen process as Candestrike 2 or CS2 here. Then we will get the client module base because the memory addresses were relative to the client.dll module. We will use the sweat.get module base method to do that. Now the first address we will add is the force attack. This is because it's relative to the client and we don't need to read any pointers or so on. We can just add the client and the offset. The offset will be the dv force attack and that's it. Then we will create the trigger bot loop. It will be set to true to always run. Then we will clear the console because we will write in a bit the entity ID continuously to the console. But to get to the entity index ID, we will first have to retrieve our local player pawn, which is us. Then, when we have our local player pawn, we can get the entity ID index by reading the local player pawn with the offset of the id and index. This offset will be inside of the client.dll.cs file on the github and you can just control f to find it id and index. When we have the id of the entity index and so on we can check if our user is holding our desired hotkey down minus mouse 5 or mouse 4, I don't remember which one. If you want to use a different hotkey value, just go on the Microsoft documentation under the virtual keys. We can check the entity index ID. Now, we said in this video earlier that we would shoot at any entity, so we will check if the entity index is above zero, it's minus one if we don't aim at anything, and above zero if it's aiming at an entity. And we will then write to the force attack address, like we saw in the explanation, 65537 to plus attack, then sleep for one millisecond, and then do a minus attack, which is setting the value to 256. This will perform a mouse click or an attack and we will shoot at this entity that is in our crosshair. I noticed at the end 
we are not going to use the client over here. What am I doing? We're going to use the local player part. There we go. Now it's correct. Let's try it out. Alright, so now that we're done with the code, let's try it out in Counter Strike 2. So, like always, you will right click on Counter Strike 2 and launch with the dash insecure option. Our code, hit the run button, and we can see our crosshair ID, and it's showing minus one because we're not aiming at anything. Let's aim at a, a teammate or enemy. You can see 277, perfect. If we hold our aim or trigger key, it shoots whenever we aim at an enemy. Yeah, that's pretty clean. We're not invisible though. Let's hope we can. Oh, yeah.